Good morning, my name is Jacob Bolger. I'm an artist sculptor and today we're going to make a uh, air plant holder uh, with a uh, stone and some polymer clay. We're going to sculpt a little dog, uh, a little meditating dog and uh, put that on the stone as well and before I do that I'd like to seal the stone. Um, I'm using an acrylic product here um, and uh, I just basically paint it on. I only need one coat but I want to make sure I get good coverage. So I'll make sure I brush it in really good. You can find stones outdoors and uh, a good place to look is around water sources like uh, creeks and lakes and that sort of thing or the beach. Uh, you also can buy them online if you look around. You can do a search on uh, stones or landscaping stones, that sort of thing. This will dry uh, fairly quickly, but I'd like to show you how I do it. And, uh, and we can start preparing the clay and getting ready to uh, get the sculpture going here. I set there a minute. What I like to do is uh, just prop it up under a tool, uh, over a tool like that, so it only has a couple points of contact and that will help it to dry better. And the brush you should definitely wash in water. I have a cup off to the side here and I'm doing just that. Now we're going to be working in polymer clay and this is uh, Sculpey 3 brand that I'm using. It uh, works really good with uh, adhering to stones and uh, I do recommend it, but if you want to try another brand of clay, that would be fine. I'm using black clay because I like the way my finishes look on it. And later on in the video, I'll show you how I would uh, do a finish like uh, that I like, a kind of a bronze-like finish on the, on the dog. going to get a little bit of clay for the beginning of the head and all that. I roll it into a ball like about this size and then I'm going to take my fingers like that about a little more than halfway down the uh, sides of the ball and I'm going to roll it like that and that's going to give me the shape of a neck and it just makes it easier uh, to have that so we can add later to it and then you can also hold it by that so it doesn't damage the uh, sculpture you're doing. Now you do want to condition your clay and that's just basically taking the clay and uh, squeezing it like this, kneading it which I did before I turned on the camera. Um, the conditioning will mix up the clay in the, uh, and uh, all the ingredients in it so that it sculpts well and also bakes well. I'm going to take a little ball of clay here and I'm just going to put it on the front of the beginning of the head and that's going to be for the beginning of the nose. And then I'm just going to blend it in Okay, that's the, the um, basic shape I've got there. I've got the uh, kind of nose um, blended into the uh, head mostly. Just touching it up there. I'm going to take a small ball tool and I want to start work on the eyes. So I'm going to um, put <clears throat> um, eye sockets in. So that's one. And that's two. They should be uh, about the same size and depth, and uh, you want them uh, the same, you know, uh, 
distance away from each other, the orientation should be the same but on either side of the head. I try to look at it from all directions. Then I'm going to take uh, a very small piece of clay and this will be for the eyeballs. And once I've formed it in my hand, I'll shape, I'll uh, place it into the eye socket to see how it fits. <clears throat> I basically want it level with the, uh, evenly across for the front of the eye. So I want it actually sitting in the eye socket, not sticking out. So that's about right. Then what I'll do is I'll take it out and put it on the table and then roll another to be like it, to match it. And there, they're fairly, uh, fairly close to the same. Then I'll uh, go ahead and put them in. That one seems a little big actually, so let me take it back out and just pinch off a little. Now this video is dedicated to my good friend Sandra. Um, we chat a lot on <clears throat> Facebook and um, she actually asked me about, uh, she saw a picture of one that went like this that I had done before and, uh, and so uh, she asked me if I would do a video on it so I said I would. Now I'm going to take, uh, this is a kind of a broken paintbrush here, but the back end can be useful. And I'm going to put in uh, the pupils of the eyes. Like that. Like that. And then uh, I'm going to take a little bit of clay and roll it into a noodle like that and put it over top of that eyeball. You can pinch off whatever you don't, don't need or don't want. And then in the back here, I'll uh, blend it in to the head and get another piece here for the other side just going to stick it on there for a minute and sort of get my other hand going here And pinch it off there and blend that into the uh, top of the head. Now see how he looks kind of angry? You don't really want that. So there's a couple of things I'm going to do. One thing is, first of all, I'm going to fix the pupils. <clears throat> I want the top of the pupils to be under the eyelids. So I'm going to just fix that real quick. And then also, um, I'll show you this, um, let me pull this up close. This line right here and there and running up that way also can give the impression that he's angry. So if you just take a tool and gently remove that by just blending it, he suddenly becomes a lot more friendly. So, I'm just taking out a little bit more of that on this side and this side. See how it's like much more e uh, easy going? So just keep that in mind for yourself. Now, um, on a dog, they have a kind of a, a little indentation that runs up over their, over their head like this. 
and you can put that in with uh, with a tool like that and then you can subdue it a little bit by just pressing just so it's not so prominent And then uh, I'm going to take just a little bit of clay here and I'm going to start working on his nose. And so I just take a little ball of clay like this and flatten it slightly like that. And then put that on the end of his nose. And then what I'll do is I'll blend it in at the top. So it kind of looks like that. And then what I'll do is I'll take a, <clears throat> pardon me, I got a little bit of a frog in my throat here. I'll take a uh, piece of clay, a, a noodle of clay like, it, like this. And put it at the center of the bottom of the nose there. And then bring it back and just terminate it by uh, pinching it off there. And then I'll take my sculpting tool. And this is for his upper lip. So that's what it looks like from the bottom and from the side like that. And then, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure why my throat is acting up like that. Um, and then I'll roll another noodle like that. Bring it on the other side of his uh, nose at about center. Pinch it off on the side like that, like I did on the other side. And then uh, blend that in. Now, if you're new to this, um, or new to just working in a small, uh, on a small piece like this, I mean, this would be considered miniature by most. There are people that make things that big, um, but this is still considered miniature. Um, but, you know, just keep in mind that you're going to get used to uh, it the more you practice. So, we got what we got so far. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of clay. A ball of clay and uh, roll it into an oblong shape and that's going to be his bottom jaw I'm just gonna stick it in there like that and uh, as I press it in <clears throat> it will become uh, it will start to spread out and fit in there a little bit better Really, the you know when you're new to something, it really it, it doesn't really matter what it is. I mean, anything in life really that you have to do, it's going to take time. You're going to have to practice to get good at what you're doing. Um, I mean, and you know, practicing different, making different things and that sort of thing um, will get you there. Uh, you know, I make, uh, I try to make a, at least something every day for myself so I can maintain the uh, dexterity that I have with my fingers and all that. And I'm just kind of, you know, positioning that so. And then I'll take, uh, let's see what, what we've got here. This little tool is, it's a little tiny ball tool. Let's see, this side, one side's bigger than the other. So I'll use this side and 
I'll put in a little indentation for the nostrils. Want, want them to be at the same height. And I'll use the other side of the tool, uh, the other side to, which is a smaller uh, bit in there. And I'll just draw that down to create that uh, line or break in the nostril. And there we are, so far. Now we could probably leave them there at this point. Okay, the um, the stone is about dry, so we can go ahead and start working on that. Now, before I start, I just want to uh, get an idea of, you know, have a plan of how I'm going to do this. So the dog, I'm thinking, well, let's see, let's grab one of these plants. How about this one here? So, if I put that there, I think the plant would be better higher up. And then put the uh, dog right here. So that kind of gives me an idea of how, what I want to do. Um, then what I'm going to do is just, whenever I uh, start working with clay after it's been sitting for a minute, I go ahead and knead it a little bit. And that helps to just keep it, you know, fairly conditioned. Um, now I'm going to take a, uh, a little ball of clay and want to add to the body some. So I'm just going to just sort of mold it on to uh, the beginning of the body that we had before. I want to make sure that uh, it's going to be fairly proportionate. Now, so I think, you know, that that height would probably be pretty good. Which is just about, not quite, but just about uh, two uh, heights of the head <clears throat> from here to here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, <clears throat> some Stolpy Bacon Bond. Decide where he's going to go on here. Let's see. So probably right about there would be good. So I'm going to put um, just a dab on here. And this is a bacon bond is a uh, baking adhesive so that when it bakes it gets very hot and it uh, gets the uh, adhesion qualities mostly at that time. And I'll take the uh, body of the dog and press it and uh, while rotating like that you know to kind of work it in to the stone and to the uh, adhesive. Now once I've got the dog on there, I, I get I have an idea of how you know how level I need to make this. What I'm going to do is take a uh, a ball of clay, maybe a little bit bigger. I'm rolling it off screen because there's kind of a lack of room down there, and I'm going to roll it in a little bit of an oblong shape like that. <clears throat> I'm going to take a piece of paper. And fold it, a small piece of paper, fold it in half, put the stone on top, and <clears throat> I'm going to make a little base out of the clay for the um, stone for the stone to sit on so that it doesn't wobble like that. So I'm going to press this kind of semi-flat like that and uh, put it about at center. Now, uh, polymer clay, or at least Sculpey 3 brand, does stick to things, so, but it doesn't stick very well to paper, so that's what the paper's for. And then I'll set it on there like that, and I'll just sort of, pushing down, I'll uh, just kind of seat that clay on the bottom to the stone. And, uh, oops. And then pull it off so um, 
it looks like that and uh, and you can cut off the excess if you don't want to see it or have it you know more subdued in the background there and then I'm just straightening up the dog next I'm gonna take uh, a uh, piece of ball of clay here and roll it into a uh, noodle like that then I'm gonna bring the uh, the ends around like uh, kind of like that and this is gonna be for the legs now the stone is kind of drifting off downwards here so <clears throat> um, you know it's important to me to uh, sculpt the dog on the stone as opposed to uh, sculpting him first and then putting him on the stone because then I'm gonna have problems with him kind of looking like he's supposed to be there so I'm gonna take another ball of clay here and rolling the arms now maybe not not quite as thick as what the legs would be and this is going to be a robed dog I just want to So I'm going to do it set up like that. Now this, this sculpting technique that I teach is a, uh, you know, called simple, simple shapes. And uh, it makes it very obtainable. Uh, you know, when you look at a completed sculpture, sometimes it's difficult to figure out how it came together. And this... This sculpting technique makes it a lot easier because all you're doing really is uh, sculpting, uh, forming simple shapes and then assembling them to form figures and whatever. And then uh, I'm going to make a little bit of a collar here. And uh, just rolling a noodle and, and sometimes rolling it on a table is easier because it uh, helps it remain a lot more uniform. I like to keep it a little bit longer because um, on the longer side because then I can see make sure it's going to be long enough if you guesstimate it sometimes it isn't long enough and then you can take a knife and just cut it to fit in there and then you can just sort of squeeze it and uh, press it to a little bit to press it into place and then also flatten it slightly. And you can take uh, a tool like this and just put it dead center between uh, in the middle of the arms there and just make a little uh, indentation Uh, for the separation of the sleeves and then what I like to do now this is a very simple way to sculpt a robe I mean you're probably like wow this is so easy yeah it'll make it things a lot different one for you in the future if you like doing uh, robed creatures I'm taking a little noodle of clay and I'm putting it in there and that's for the uh, for the sleeve the end of the sleeve 
I actually use this piece down here for uh, for the other side and uh, just put it in there like that and then sort of curve it off like that so it's kind of drooping or hanging and then you can take a, a sculpting tool and just kind of blend it in there and uh, and then you can also come around and just blend anything that needs to be blended and uh, use the tool to kind of make a smooth transition Using. As you see, I, I really don't have a lot of tools. Um, I, I know there are pet people that have, you know, millions and millions of tools, but there's just a few tools that I like to use um, and that I'm very comfortable with using. And then these are the ones here that you can see pretty much. That's what, that's what I use. So, um, no, it's up to you, of course whatever you like now um, <clears throat> so he's sitting up straight but it's his body is sort of coming down a little bit like that now um, what you can do also is uh, take a little bit of clay here and roll a ball I'm rolling a ball about that big and then roll it into a noodle like that and again rolling it on the table can make it a lot easier to get it mostly uniform so to like it's like about that and then I'm just going to put it along the bottom And this is going to be kind of how the we get the bottom of the robe to look kind of cool. And like that. And then you can take, uh, you can use your fingers if you can. Ideally you can, but sometimes it's such a tight spot that it's hard to get your finger in there. But keep in mind that your fingers are far better to use if you can. And the reason why is because your fingers are, are they're similar to these tools as far as the shape go. The bone anyways. But they have tissue and skin on top of them, so they're padded. And, uh, and they, uh, for that reason, they don't leave um, a lot of markings that uh, something rigid like this would. So just, uh, just keep that in mind. I mean, and then also, of course, if you're practicing and you're relatively new at this, you want every opportunity to use your fingers as much as possible. I'm just going around and blending this. And then 
you can take your uh, your sculpting tool and just go up underneath and just press somewhat randomly around the around the edge which will lift it making it look more like a naturally uh, a natural robe um, sculpted against the rock. See how that looks more natural there? And then finally, uh, you can put in the detail of the wrinkles. Now, there's a couple ways to do that. One is with small noodles of clay, um, but it takes a long time to do that. So the other thing you can do is just basically take a tool like this and carve in the wrinkles. So you can do it fairly randomly, you can try to do it fairly symmetrically or once you've got the the line carved in you can press on it slightly to kind of change the uh, hardness of that cut. You can also take the tool and just press it against it and rock it a little bit like that sort of making that that wrinkle like that So what we got there and then put one over here. So in some, there is some symmetry to what I did, but it's it's mostly um, you know just fairly random, really, and just um, so. And then I'll just uh, press on it a little bit to try to kind of subdue it slightly, subdue those wrinkles. Okay, next I'm going to put his ears on and. Uh, I didn't want to put them on now because I wasn't sure how I wanted to do it. I wanted to think about it. But sometimes I have the ears hang down as low as the collar also. And I'd want them to go over the collar, not under it. So um, I think actually you can put, you know, ears that stand up. But, but I think in this, for this little guy, I'm going to, I'm going to do ears that uh, hang down. Kind of like hound dog. And I'm um, just going to roll two balls of clay uh, to start off with uh, making them about the same size like that. That way it kind of ensures that the ears will at least be the same size. If I can get the orientation right, everything should work out. Let's see, I'm making maybe about this long... I'm going to kind of pinch the ends of the, the sides a little bit. This, I've flattened it slightly so it looks like this now. And I'm going to do that with the other one and pinching it slightly. Let 
going to match that to this one to make sure they're about the same and they are and condition, uh, position it there on the head and just get it sort of into place so you can see what it looks like there and then I'm going to do the other also and while I'm doing the other, I'm going to look at it from kind of a top view to make sure I'm positioning it right. And uh, just pay attention to, you know, how it's going on. Is it, you know, close to the same as the other one? You know, looking at it, looking at it from all directions. And then just pressing it in a little bit tighter to the to the head just so that they're secure to it. And then blend it at the top where it uh, where it joins the head. I'm sorry, I'm off screen there for a second. And he's a, a pretty cool looking dog, actually, I think. And then looking at him from the side, I want to make sure that he's sitting up straight. Like that. Now um, I'm going to do the plant holder. I'm going to try to decide which plant I want to use here. I have a few. Actually, I have ten plants right now. But these were the ones that seemed uh, the best for this application. And I really like the idea of the, these little things coming over and kind of almost touching him, if not touching him, and just kind of uh, hiding him a little bit like that I like that and uh, and so so the plant is gonna go pretty much right here on the back of the stone where it's uh, kind of hid, hidden from view um, and I just want to knead my clay again a little bit just keep make sure that conditioning is in effect and that uh, also, if it's softer and kind of warm to the touch, it's going to uh, adhere better to the stone, even though we are going to use the Sculpey Bacon Bond also, but just kind of, just want to, you know, make it so that it'll last. That's the idea. And so, um, so the holder portion is going to go right there. And I've rolled the ball now. <clears throat> I'm going to put some bacon bond on it. And I'm going to uh, press it while twisting into the back of the stone here. And then also um, I'm going to uh, kind of bring it in tight to the stone so it's nice and neat and I don't want to I don't want to blend it because I don't want to smear it on the stone I don't want to do that because it won't look neat I want it to look nice and neat also Next, I want to um, kind of flatten the top a little bit, making it maybe a little bit more level, but also when you flatten something, it expands the uh, uh, width of it, uh, or girth, I guess you could say. 
have like that. So that's what it looks like on that side. And next, I want to take this uh, this ball tool, and you could use other tools. I mean, you could use a ball. This ball tool would be ideal, but you could use something like this also, or possibly even your finger. I do like to show options about what kind of tools you can use because some people don't have, uh, you know, certain things. Now I'm holding on to the clay. I'm supporting it with my fingers and I'm also holding the clay to the stone with my thumb. So it's kind of my thumb is clamping it. And I'm putting in a hole and it's just going to be, I don't want it tight around the plant. I just want it to cradle it. So I want to make it big enough to cradle it. So I'm just turning the tool like this once I get the hole started. And then once I get it to a certain size, I'll uh, set the plant in there and see if, uh, if it'll fit. So it's still a little bit small. Make it a little deeper and wider. And if it if it gets rough along the top like that, you can just sort of uh, squeeze it and um, smooth it out. That's about right there. It just takes uh, a little bit of playing with it to get it to where you want it. And that looks pretty good there and then you can adjust you can adjust these so that they're not so in the way so much you see it from the back side it's pretty hard to see once you once you set it on the stone like that actually and then we'll take that out and we'll go ahead and just smooth everything out a little bit Just um, kind of smooth all this out here. You can make it deeper if you need to. You can use your fingers at this point. And then also, um, you know, when you're moving the stone all around while you're working on it, it, it flattens this clay out underneath um, and sometimes, uh, you know, distorts it. So you definitely want to make sure that that's going to be um, nice and, you know, be able to stand level like that. So you might want to flatten it more, add more clay if you have to or whatever, just to get it to be... Uh, to you know the you know the levelness that you want and all that. And we'll just take a look at it and make sure that it's where I want it to be, and just check my sculpting and the blending. It looks like just maybe I missed a little bit of the blending here around the around the top of the lip. Now I do like to leave sculpting marks in because it's just it's basically my style and I just like the way it looks with the 
finishes I do and that sort of thing but you might want to smooth yours and you can do um, in the video description down below the video there will be two videos uh, links to two videos on smoothing um, polymer clay uh, there will also be a tool and supply list and uh, baking instructions so uh, that will be there but I'm just going around here and just still just checking everything out and then uh, when you're you've got it to where you want it uh, we'll put a finish on it the uh, now this you can finish it of course any way you like I'm just going to show you the way I'm going to I'd like to finish this one um, I'm going to use my uh, Pearl X powdered pigments um, and the color will be antique bronze and I have a little lid here uh, with it on there with it in there I should say and um, I'm going to get a little bit on my finger swirl it like that and then I'm just going to highlight it uh, I don't really want to cover all the black I just want to you know give it almost an antique look or the look of what bronze looks like when when you see bronze actual bronze um, this is this finishes uh, that I'm doing here is very convincing uh, to people if they don't pick up the piece they might say oh is that is that bronze is that metal you know and they'll actually think that because it looks like it and it's like I say very convincing so I don't like to touch the the stone with the um, with my fingers because I don't want to get the bronze on the stone and then if there's any areas that I miss that I want to get um, what I do is I take a paintbrush um, like this and I wet it slightly wipe off the excess water dip it in the bronze dab it off on a table to get that all that excess off that you see there and then just go in and just just touch it here and there to kind of get that those areas and again you know a lot of the black is showing through to me this looks like a very old uh, bronze statue of a dog sitting on a rock so, get this here a little bit and then uh, I uh, in this case I'll leave the uh, the holder itself um, in black just so it stays mostly hidden Let's see was that the plant I think this is it here I'm not sure actually it was this one I'll put the plant in there and that is that's it there now the final thing to do is to uh, bake your sculpture and uh, that the baking instructions for polymer clay sculpey 3 brand is down in the video description down below the video um, and just follow those instructions just to also let you know the stone will be okay uh, while it gets hot in the oven it doesn't get that hot in this application um, you know the average cooking temperature and uh, all that is and length of time is not really long enough or hot enough to hurt a stone um, so just keep that in mind and uh, but that will be uh, those instructions will be in the video description below the video and then we'll come back
Okay, so here we are, and um, here is the uh, Zen or Meditating Dog uh, air plant holder, and uh, I think it was. I think that's a fun project. I know it's uh, for for someone that's new. It might be uh, some extra work, but um, again, you know, practice is is the most important thing, and at this time and for you to just um, get better at what you do um, so uh, that's about it uh, if you could do me a favor if you could uh, hit the like button and let me know that you like the video um, and also share the video with your friends so other people can see how to do this and then uh, leave me a comment or question in the comment section and also tell me what kind of um, tutorials you'd like to see um, I've been wanting to do some more animals and if you have some ideas for animals or some uh, meditating animals air plant holders what have you um, I'd love to hear what your ideas are and uh, I may be able to do a video that you uh, would like to see and uh, also, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I have many, many videos along these lines. And, uh, and thank you so much for watching. Be creative, have fun, practice a bunch, and have a great day.